Welcome to Business Matters, a program produced by the Middlesex West Chamber of Commerce in conjunction with Acton TV. I'm your host, Kathleen McDonald, Executive Director of the Middlesex West Chamber of Commerce. Business Matters is a program which features chamber members and highlights information important to businesses in the Middlesex West community. And today I have the pleasure of welcoming to Business Matters Ann Rosas, Director of Admissions and Marketing of Life Care Center of Acton, and Dr. Gary Asher, one of the in-house physicians at Life Care Center of Acton. Welcome to you both. Thank Good you. To be here. Great I'm to be so here. glad you're here. That's great. Um, how long has Life Care Center of Acton been part of the Acton and Middlesex West community? Well, the building that we are housed in has been a nursing center since it was built, and I don't know the exact date, but I think it was sometime in the 1950s. Mm -hmm. Life Care um, became the owner of the building in 1986. So for the past 30 years, they have run Life Care Center of Acton. So we've been here in the community a long time. Yes, 30 years is quite a yep. tenure. Yeah. Very, very good. And tell me about the services you offer at Life Care Center. Well, we offer short and long-term care options for people who need it. So we can bring people in for a short-term rehab stay if they've had some sort of medical event or problem and they've been in the hospital. Uh, we also offer long-term care services for people who are no longer able to live in, in their own home in the community. And how is your center more than just a nursing home? Well, we're a very warm and inviting place. We're not um, a place where life stops. We're a place where life continues, even if you live with us full time. And we very much feel that we are a home. So um, the people who live with us, this is their home, and we are simply honored to work there with them. So we provide um, everything that someone would need in a home. Um, we feed people, we house people, and we have activities to keep people entertained, and we provide round-the-clock nursing and medical care as well. Wonderful. That's a wonderful philosophy to have. Thank you. And Dr. Asher, yeah, tell yeah. me a little bit about um, the kinds of patients and how you're able to work with them in terms of rehabilitation. Well, uh, in a short, a short stay uh, rehab unit, we have uh, patients that have, have been in a hospital for the most part. Occasionally they will come from a step-down uh, so-called ALTAC unit, but most come direct from a hospital. And um, this morning I admitted uh, a, a patient who had had a motor vehicle accident, was in a hospital mm -hmm. for six or seven days, needs rehabilitation. I admitted a gentleman who had had pneumonia and, and chronic lung disease that needs rehab. Mm -hmm. uh, I admitted a gentleman with uh, near-terminal uh, cancer that is going to need some help transitioning to hospice. Um, uh, I had a total knee last week, a total hip two weeks ago, mm -hmm. a fractured hip. Um, so anything that, that needs some sort of transition before they can be safe at home, mm -hmm. um, we, we deal with that. We, we have people that need feeding tubes, we have people who have trachs. We don't do uh, um, uh, respirators and, and more intensive medical work like that, but Anybody who is stable with their medical issues and needs rehabilitation services, uh, we can provide that. That's so important. Excellent, excellent. And tell me about the amenities that you offer to your residents, whether they are short-term or long-term residents. Well, one of the most fun things that we have is we have a hair salon in-house. Everyone wants to look their best, and when you've been mm -hmm. lying in bed for a while, you don't always feel that you look their best. So every Thursday, we have a hairstylist who comes in right um, on our property and makes everyone look more glamorous mm -hmm. and more like themselves. We offer um, Reiki um, for people who might um, want to take advantage of it. We have massage, acupuncture, because we realize that there's many types of healing that can happen. We have pets come in. We offer musical entertainment. We have regular um, activities uh, for people in the building. We uh, find dining. You can eat in our dining room. You're not always eating in your room or your bed. Um, so, and we have a van that takes people out into the community for um, activities. We also have a lovely courtyard that's fenced in. So when it's a little bit warmer than maybe today, people will be able to go outside, enjoy the sun and the shade and Mother Nature mm -hmm. without really having to um, make a great effort to get outside. There's nothing like being outside exactly. in the fresh air. 
for everybody. Exactly. Absolutely. I understand that you are owned by Life Care Centers of America. Mm -hmm. So what legacy and resources does that provide for your team at Life Care Center of Acton? Um, I think the, the, um, the philosophy of Life Care Centers of America is very different than than nursing homes uh, mm -hmm. that you might experience. Um, it's a business like any other business. They have to make a living like every other business does, but, but their mission is, is uh, um, uh, their goal is to be uh, um, patient-oriented. Uh, the patient comes first, asks the questions later. Um, the, the, the mission statement of the organization is uh, that uh, we will be the premier uh, uh, rehab and long-term care facility in any community that we serve. And we strive hard to do that. And that message comes uh, from headquarters in Tennessee through every, every uh, 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 level of management down to the, uh, the individual caregivers. Mm -hmm. um, we have a motto at Life Care that says, says uh, w whatever it takes and then some. Mm -hmm. And it's a button and every employee from, it. from yeah. the executive uh, to the housekeeper, where's that button every mm -hmm. day? Um, and we really do uh, encourage staff to go that extra step beyond when someone mm -hmm. needs something, mm -hmm. because you can't, you shouldn't just walk by someone who needs something from you, no matter what y your role in the organization is. We can mm -hmm. all participate, mm -hmm. and we we really give people what they need. It's so important yep. that these are not just slogans. No. Yeah. No, we live Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great. Yeah. Great. I see that you have two on-site physicians at Life Care Center of Acton, which is, n is not the norm no. for many facilities. So how do your on-site physicians assist with your mission of providing that quality care? Well, I'll start with this one. Um, it is unusual for nursing homes to have on-site physicians. Most um, mm -hmm. nursing homes are required to have a medical director, but that person is usually not on-site very often. They oversee all the medical care in the facility and they visit frequently, but our physicians are different. We have Dr. Gary Asher as one of our on-site physicians and Dr. Christine Beck, and both of these are physicians who've stepped away from their community practices and work now in our center and care for our patients in our building. So they're available and accessible, probably more hours per week than they might like, but um, they're at bedside. Um, I mm -hmm. Just the other day I saw um, Dr. Asher walking down the hall and a resident said to him, my shoulder is sore, I don't know what's wrong. And he was able to stop and just then give her a brief examination and determine what her shoulder issue was. We didn't have to call him and schedule and wait for him to come in. He was able to do it right there mm -hmm. and give her relief very quickly. So it really makes a big difference in the type of care that we provide. Um, th that also refers back to your previous question. Uh, um, Life Care is the only um, uh, nursing home uh, chain that that has full-time physicians in in their facilities, um, and this was a uh, uh, a directive that came from the top. Forrest Preston is our CEO, president, and he, um, and uh, he decided about five or six years ago uh, in his uh, um, his own way. You know what? My nursing homes need a doctor in them. And he underwrote that himself. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, and he, we are, there's about a hundred of us across the country. Um, and each one of us is a full-time physician in, in the nursing home. Mm -hmm. My background is family practice and geriatrics. And I retired <laughs> from my primary care practice uh, uh, three years ago. And mm -hmm. that was when Life Care was doing it in our area. And they said, uh, mm -hmm. I got approached. So that's, uh, that's, that's where they get their doctors from. Mm, that's wonderful. So you've been in the community your whole life and now you're just in a, a new phase. Yes. Excellent, yeah. excellent. Yeah. And tell me a little bit about how um, Life Care Center of Acton has gotten involved with the Chamber. Well, um, we've. I am the main conduit with the Chamber and I have to say I really enjoy being part of our Chamber because we're a very active group. People really do participate, and there's a variety of businesses mm -hmm. in the area. It's amazing how many businesses I didn't even know existed until I joined the chamber. So um, we attend um, 
the business breakfasts, the networking meetings, the after hours meetings. It's great to sort of meet up in a very comfortable social situation with other business owners and be able to tell them about what we do in our mm -hmm. business and find out what they do. And it's really, it's led me to be able to make some connections with other businesses who might have services that um, my residents could use mm -hmm. um, or benefit from and be able to bring them into my building and see if we can form a, some sort of partnership or work together. Um, <clears throat> and I do tell the members of the chamber themselves about the work we do because everyone mm -hmm. could have someone who might need us at some point and it's good to know mm -hmm. specifically what we do in our building. So it's been a wonderful um, blend of business and, and social networking for mm -hmm. me to be a part of the chamber. Great. So lots of benefits yes, from your membership. Absolutely. That's great. Absolutely. And also, I might add that you've you've had the opportunity to host events. Yes, we have. Which also gives yes. a wonderful opportunity for the community absolutely. to get absolutely. a chance to uh, experience Life Care exactly. Center of Acton. Many businesses great. don't have a large space. They may be a small office, and they mm -hmm. can't really host people coming in. But we are a fairly large building and we have a mm -hmm. lovely dining room so we've hosted chamber events there and it's a great way to showcase what we do but also enjoy having people come in and experience yes. it. Yeah. yeah, coming to your home. Right. 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 Excellent. Yeah. Very, very good. And who are some of your partners in the business community that you've started now to work with? I have met um, several people, for example, some individual photographers um, came, comes to mind. We do events in our building. Sometimes um, we want we want to find a local photographer to come in and do maybe some photos of our families. Um, I'm also looking for um, people to, to maybe showcase their work in our building. We have a lot of wall space. Mm -hmm. They could we would be a nice place to either show art, local art, or local photos and showcase someone else's talent and work in our building. Mm. So that's been something I've been looking for. Very creative yeah. use of your your facility well, and, and of the community connection. Right, right. Excellent. Very, right. very good. And tell me more about what impression do you hope to leave with the Middlesex West community? I would like people not to fear um, nursing homes anymore. I know that um, nursing homes have a lot of, there's a lot of stigma attached. Mm. You know, the old picture of someone in a nursing home was not a pl pleasant one. But times have really changed and we are really more of a, um, we're a modern state-of-the-art facility now. Um, we can provide the types of medical care that people need after hospitalization and before going home. So we're a bridge to home from the hospital. And then at, um, if if someone's not able to stay at home anymore um, and there are not caregivers around the clock for them, we can be a place where they can live very comfortably and safely and um, give them a good quality of life for the remaining years. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Well, thank you both. It's been such a pleasure and so informative to learn about Life Care Center of Acton. And um, we really appreciate and wish you the very best in your continuing future and your quality uh, services that you offer. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You so much. It's a privilege to be here. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And thank you so much for watching Business Matters. And before we come back to our next segment, I just want to highlight a few events that will be coming up. Um, we're in the summertime now, and we all enjoy that. So the chamber's getting in the, the summer mood as well. We're going to have a marvelous summer fest at Kimball Farm, and that's scheduled for Wednesday, July 20th, smack in the summer. So please uh, check out our website at www.mwcoc.com or call the chamber office at 978-263-0010 for more information about that wonderful event. And I'll give you two save the dates for the fall that are really spectacular events coming up. We're going to have a business conference that's being co-produced with the Metro West Chamber of Commerce. It's taking place in Maynard at the Ken Olson Auditorium. It's going to be a very innovative program, and we want all of our businesses and members and community to um, attend. That's going to be on Friday, October 21st. And then please mark your calendars now for the Taste of Middlesex. Bigger and Better this year, being hosted at the Westford Regency Inn and Conference Center. And please mark your calendars for Tuesday, November 15th. Thank you so much, and we'll be back shortly. Now it's time for This Week in Bad Stats. Bad stats? Horrible stats. Here goes. 132. 
That's how many batters struck out four times in one game last season. Wow, very good. Here's a tough one, though. Three and four. No idea. That's how many kids have witnessed bullying. Three out of four. That's not a good stat. No, it's not, but it can change. Kids want to help, but they don't know how. Visit StopBullying.gov and give them the tools they need to help prevent bullying. There are plenty of safe ways kids can help at StopBullying.gov. Welcome to Business Matters. I'm Kathleen McDonald, Executive Director of the Middlesex West Chamber of Commerce. And in this segment, we're going to change things up a bit. We are meeting our next chamber member in the kitchen. I have the pleasure of welcoming to Business Matters Executive Chef Jim Glenn of Westford Regency Inn and Conference Center. Welcome and thank you for coming to Business Matters. Thank you for having me. I'm so thrilled that you're here. I've been delighted to be looking forward to getting a chance for you to join us and for you to teach us some cooking tips from a master. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, first, before we begin cooking, can you tell me a little bit about your career at Westford Regency and also how you started into cooking? Well, I started cooking right out of high school. I had a few jobs here and there, and I really enjoyed the camaraderie, creativity, working with people. I've been at the Regency for 19 years. Oh, my goodness. Isn't that great? Yeah. Had you ever thought that it would be that long? No. Actually, I was planning on a one year, and it just stayed with me. And what's made you stay? Um, I enjoy it there. Years. I enjoy it there. I feel at home. That's great. That's great. Tell me a little bit about the community events that the Westford Regency takes uh, part in. Well, we regularly do Rotary, Habitat for Humanity. We've done some cancer walks. And we recently participated in the Taste of Neshoba. And in November, we will be doing the Middlesex Taste. In mm -hmm. early next year, we're going to do the awards banquet. That's wonderful. Our award celebration is one of our most prized annual events. And we are We're looking, looking forward, forward to it. it. Yeah. yeah, excellent. So what are we creating today in the kitchen? A seared scallop crostini. Oh, how wonderful. That's great. It sounds like a wonderful appetizer to enjoy during all these spring and summer events that we're going to be celebrating soon. It is. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. So where do we start? Okay, well first we are going to Take a little bit of garlic herb butter, get our bread ready, and we're going to sear this in a pan. I have some roasted red peppers here, mm -hmm. and I am going to puree them. Okay. Next, I have a, heat, a preheated pan. Okay. I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil in it. You want to look for little ripples in those oils. Make sure the pan is hot enough. Okay. I get some nice fresh scallops here. I'm going to peel the muscle off. Is the secret to scallops the freshness of them? Yes, and, yeah. and you want to get nice, plump, juicy, dry scallops, as they're called. They're not soaked in water. Ah, or, okay. Which, I'm a seafood lover, so this is just up my alley. Fresh sea salt. Get a little color on them. So, Chef Jim, tell me, what's the secret of cooking scallops well that you don't undercook or overcook them? They need to be slightly translucent in the middle. You do not want to overcook them as they get dry and rubbery. Mm. So they need a little translucency. Okay, so translucent in the middle. Yep. Okay. Oh, great. Our bread's done already. It's Wonderful. Perfect. Great. And is this a, a recipe um, that you've created? Yes, it is on the menu in the restaurant in the hotel. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. And this is a, is a favorite of guests? Yes, it is. And mine, too. And yours, too. Wonderful. I know a lot of people enjoy seafood. Okay, that's the perfect oh. right there. Perfect color. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Great. Tell me a little bit about some of the upcoming and ongoing changes at the Westford. The hotel is being entirely renovated. Right now we're doing all of the guest rooms and giving them a nice modern feel in oh, the banquet wonderful. rooms. 
and in the near future, we're going to put in a new restaurant. That's exciting. Yep. That means new menus for you. Correct. Right. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. So what's, what's propelling all these changes for you at the Westford Regency? New and in, a new ownership. Yeah. New ownership? Okay. Correct. Staying competitive? That's right. right. Competitive and innovative. We're changing the way we do everything. From the way we cook, and the way we serve, and the oh. way we sell, and the technology we give to our customers. Excellent. Excellent. Tell me a little bit more while we're waiting for the scallops to finish. Or maybe they're finished already. Oh, they're getting close. Oh, good. And remember, we don't want them to be overcooked. No. So here, we have to move forward here. We're going to add a little bit of white wine. Oh, very good. And I see here. Oh, they smell delicious. Put these on top of here. Mm-hmm. Lovely. And we're going to make a sauce in the pan. A little wine. With a little more wine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. Some of my pureed red peppers. And a little bit of cream. Is there a particular wine that you like to use when you're cooking? Just yeah, Chardonnay. This recipe? Just Chardonnay. Okay. And this here is a garlic herb butter. Mm-hmm. So we're going to make an herb butter sauce here. Very nice, with a little cream. Excellent. Right. So we're stirring it the entire time because we don't want the butter to break. We want it to be incorporated into the sauce. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's a beautiful color, too. How nice. And then we're going to pour it all over. The, just kind of drench it in there. Mm. A little bit of fresh chopped basil. And this is one of your favorite appetizers that you serve at the Westford. It is. It yeah, is. how pretty. Very colorful, and presentation means so much, doesn't it? It sure does. Yeah. And I think more and more people are really taking that into account. Very yeah. lovely. There we go. Voila. Voila. That's correct. <laughs> very nice. Very, very nice. So tell me a little bit more about being innovative and competitive and creative in the kitchen. What, what inspires your creativity and how are you um, making some changes in terms of menu for the Westford? Well, I love to eat and try new things. So that's what inspires me. Mm -hmm. Life in general, all the foods that are available to us all the different items that the customers are looking for and so many of them want something different and special. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something they wouldn't have at home. Correct. Right? People come to the hotel with an idea, this is what I want for my wedding, mm. and we accommodate them. Mm -hmm. And what's been one of the more unusual things that you've accommodated? There's, <laughs> so, there's so many of them, I really can't think of a, you know, a one particular, particular one that sticks out. But we're uh -huh. looking forward to Mother's Day. We have a really special Mother's Day this year way different than what we've done in the past. Oh, really? Yeah. How, how is it going to be different? We'll have lobster, filet. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Very nice, very nice. I've actually attended a Mother's Day there at Westford Regency, and it's a real gala. It's really special. Yep. I know you all, you go all out. Excellent, excellent. So thank you so much. We've really appreciated this. This smells and looks so delicious. Oh, very, very lovely. Thank you very, very much. It's been a real pleasure learning some great tips from you, and thank you for coming to Business Matters. The pleasure has been mine. Oh, thank you. And thank you for watching this segment of Business Matters. We ask you to stay tuned for our next segment with our next chamber member. Today, about one in five Americans is living with a disability. Over 50 million people, including many of our friends and neighbors, teachers and coworkers, heroes and leaders. 20 years ago, the Americans with Disabilities Act guaranteed every person the right to live, work, and participate fully in the American experience. We've come a long way since then, and we are committed to making even more progress in the years ahead. Visit disability.gov to see how you can help. Welcome back to Business Matters. And now we have the pleasure of welcoming to Business Matters Ken Silva and Steve Rubner 
of the Acton Lions Club. Welcome both to, of you to Business Matters. We're so glad you came. Oh, well, thank you for having us. Thank you very much. Thank You're you. most welcome. Tell me a little bit about the origins of the Lions Club. Well, I'll, I'll take that one. Um, the Lions were started actually almost 100 years ago. Today, this, this is our, our 99th year. Uh, next year marks our centennial, so it's going to oh. be a big celebratory year. Uh, it was started actually by a, a business person in a business group very much like the, like the chamber. Um, and they felt like they needed to do more for their community. They needed to give back rather than just take from or kind of develop or, or uh, to build themselves. They need to actually start doing things on behalf of uh, the communities. So uh, they developed a uh, program to start and to get involved and do some charity work. And, and, and they were more um, just, they were gener more generalized at that point, but they were just doing things. And then uh, about 1925, Helen Keller um, had met with them and asked them to step up and, and do more on behalf of uh, folks with kind of issues with sight. Okay. And uh, that's really where the Lions kind of uh, emphasis on sight has taken off. So they, uh, they're, they're a global, we're a global organization, 4,600 local clubs. So every Tuesday when we meet somewhere on the planet, there's 46 other hundred other clubs meeting and 1.4 million people doing this on behalf of volunteerism. So. How wonderful. That really warms my heart. You hear about all the negative in the world, but the lines are part of the sure. positive. Absolutely. That's excellent. Absolutely. That's so excellent. So tell me, Steve, what do the Acton Lions do? We've been very fortunate as a club. We've been a, this is our 60th anniversary this year. So out of the 100 years, we've been you know around for 60 years. We do a lot of fundraising during the year. If you go through our calendar year, we start off with the football, food games. You know, if we have a food booth that we run up at the high school games. You know, and then, then we do the ski and skate scale, sale in um, um, November. We sell Christmas trees for mm -hmm. the holidays. You know, and then we have the um, town fair, which will be coming up in June. You know, so and we're, we're, our money, we give 50% uh, to you know, the eye, eye research, and then the other 50% we give back to the community. Yeah. In, Wonderful. In between, we do other things. We, we, uh, we, we did an auction for some other groups. We cleaned up the highway uh, just last weekend. Uh, we go out and pick up trash on Route 2A, and uh, uh, we do a pot uh, supper for, um, yep, yep, uh, for the Senior Center yep, for on St. Patrick's, Patrick's Day. Day. Yep. So a number of different activities like that. We give out turkeys during uh, Thanksgiving for people who you know, don't have enough uh, of their own. Yeah, to, the food to, pantry, mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, always another event coming up to help, help the community. Oh, Excellent. Ab absolutely. Ken, what made you become a, a, a lion? Um, I think when you when you move to a neighborhood and you realize that's where you're going to make your stake in life and grow your family, you mm -hmm. uh, you have this grand vision of what you want it to be like, and, and that usually involves being part of something, right? Being a, a part of the fabric of the community. So when my kids were younger, they were in elementary school. There's always an opportunity to do something. There's youth sports. There's helping out at the school. There's field trips. There's this, that, and the other thing. So they they both moved on, and uh, at that time, I'm I'm thinking like, okay, so you know, what do I really want to do? So I, I've, I've always been involved with stuff, but I, I looked around and, and um, I have a friend who's a, who's a member uh, of the Lions. So I, I researched, I, I basically went to a bunch of Lions uh, activities and events, and I tried to figure out who are these people, what do they do, and, and everything like that, and, and I, I just kind of fell in love with it. And it's, it's a real connection to community. And the second that you, um, you embrace them, they embrace you right back, and you have an instantaneous family, and they're, they're some of the best people you, you'll ever mm -hmm. want to meet. So. Uh, it's a no-brainer and, and you know like Ken just made a great description we're a family like mm. once you become a, a member of the Acton Lions the camaraderie the, the fellowship that's there it's it's unbelievable when you like for me when I joined my kids were younger and your kids are involved in everything and what they gain out of that it, it's just such a huge development for them too mm -hmm. it's it's mm -hmm. we have a we do a lot but we have a lot of fun in everything we do so anyone mm -hmm. that's looking to become a member should realize that um, not only do we work hard, but we have a lot of laughs and a lot of uh, fun during our events that we do do. Yeah. Very good-hearted people. Excellent. Absolutely. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. So if, if one's interested, how would one go about becoming a, a lion? Well, we, at all the fundraisers, we have applications at them. You know, another mm -hmm. thing, too, is, you know, we meet the first and third um, Tuesdays of every month in the, during the year that we have our meetings, and we've had a couple of members just come up and introduce themselves and said they'd like to become members and they've joined the club and they've just uh, been outstanding lions since mm. doing that. So we are looking for anyone that's willing to help and serve their community and um, we're open to, you know, we have, 
we have for uh, um, service organizations they really struggle having uh, you know enrollment now we are doing outstanding we really uh, we've had um, uh, I, since I've, I've been a member almost 10 years and the club has changed dramatically in that 10 years and we've we've had boy I think 20 new members come in during that period maybe even more and they're all not only just great gentlemen and uh, uh, you know uh, ladies uh, but they just their commitment to the Lions is is unbelievable you know we've had one uh, past uh, you know international director we've had two presidents of I research mm -hmm. you know that um, you know it's amazing the history of this club. I mean, what brought me into this club is um, when I f sat one day with one of the elder statements of the club, you know, and she explained to me just the history of the club. It just caught me so right there that, you know, and it's been the 10 best years of my life. Mm. So. Mm -hmm. That says so much about the organization to, to know that you're, you're gaining mem members right and left, which is excellent. Mm. And I understand it's been relatively recently that women have been able to become Lions. How did that come about? Uh, recently, as in uh, about 40 years now. Oh, 40 it's, years? Yeah, okay, 40 years, I was yeah. mistaken then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. yeah it, it, I think okay. it started as, 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 as pr primarily that, that business community that f dominated probably more by, by you know, male activity. Mm -hmm. And um, I think the last year that they, um, uh, prior to involving women more, uh, because wives and children, it, it is a, a true family thing. My, my, wife's, my wife and kids, they're always doing activities, always helping out one way or the mm -hmm. other. But the last person prior to um, you know, opening the doors and accepting women as, as members was uh, they, they gave an honorary kind of um, award to Mother Teresa. And I think that spurred on more of the notion of just opening up the floodgates. And it's been the fastest growing um, segment of our, of our member base is, is women participation globally. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we love, uh, we love having women as, as members. We, um, we seek to, to have members, period. And, and so uh, what we found is that women are, are uh, uh, more willing to join more recently with our club. It's actually the fastest growing segment of, of the Acton Lions. And um, we're... We're open. We're, we'll, we'd love to have more women on board. So, uh, how have you seen that be impacting your club and changes? I think it's been an interesting. Uh, just recently, it, you know, it's it's been. I've only been on board for about three years now, uh, but I, I've seen there's there. We've got a, a new um, member. And she's very. She does just about every event that we have, and I run the I run the, tr the tree sale. And she was there day in, day out, and there were some cold days, and she was just moving trees and cutting lines and making them available and doing all sorts of things. So they bring a lot of energy. They bring a lot of softness, a, little, a lot of reason to the typical kind of male kind of approach, direct kind of approach. There's a lot of things that they bring to the table that you kind of add to the spice of what we do, and, uh, and it's been a great contribution. And I, and I welcome, if anybody's watching this, uh, if you're looking to do great volunteer work, getting deep into your community, uh, please let us know. Come it's on board. nice to have me offer the example of men and women working cooperatively together for a common goal. It's mm -hmm. great. Absolutely. Great. Yeah. Tell me, um, talking about impact, how do you see the Lions impacting the Middlesex West community? We'll, we'll look, we're, you know, first of all, we're honored to be a member of the, the chamber now, you know, and uh, we're looking forward to, you know, I guess it's, we need to look at what is the best way for us to get involved with the chamber, you know, I mean, and we're going to mm -hmm. reach out, we're, you know, look at what we can do to better the chamber and what we can do that the chamber can be a part of us, you know, mm -hmm. our fundraising and all the stuff like that that we during, do during the year. So it's going to be a learning experience for us, but we're, we're so honored to be a member. No. And we're so we're so thrilled that you are have joined the ranks of the chamber, and uh, we welcome you. Thank you. Thank great, you. great. Well, you know, June is we're starting in on the the wonderful time of year that we all we all long for in the middle of January, and that's our summertime. And one of the the special things that the Lions focuses on is your fair. So um, tell me a little bit about the history of that. How long has the fair been going on? The fair has basically gone on since the start of the club. It's gone on oh, for really? over 60 years. You know, it's been to many different places, you know, in, in the town. It started off in Boxborough that they did it. And they used to do that the Rotary was involved in it, that the Rotary would have a chicken dinner, and then the, the Lions would take care of the fair. Then they went up to the um, high school where it was a big event for the mm -hmm. community for a lot of years. Then they started doing work on the fields and stuff like that. When I joined, they were up in front of um, the Marion School there. That's where they were involved with. And uh, I sat up there one su one hot summer night, and I said, well, you got to figure a better place out there. So we had a great relationship with the uh, rec department and 
Mara and Kathy have gone out of their way to help us. So we went up and we tried Narrow Park, which was a beautiful facility to be up there. And we tried to use the amphitheater, but it was very hard to promote it up there. And there was mm -hmm. limited parking. So then they helped us get down on School Street where we are right now, off, okay. right off 2A. So we have been up there, this will be I think our fourth year up there. Um, you'll see the ball on 2A very shortly, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. coming up up there. And we have looked at different ways that we really can get the community involved up there and make it more than just the fair and see if we can bring back the history that was back in the 60s and the 70s. Great. So we're looking at this year of, uh, on Friday night, we're gonna have uh, Veterans Night. We've tried it a couple of years, minimal uh, results. So this year we're gonna have a concert up there. We got a, a young man that's in the high school, uh, Jimmy Connor, that's gonna go up there and play. Um, on Saturday, we, we tried to have a community day where we were gonna get all the elementaries in school back in September. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, it was the only weekend that a hurricane come up the coast, so we had to cancel it. So we're gonna now have that day on Saturday there. So we're gonna get all the elementary schools. It's gonna be a fundraiser that we're gonna help the elementary schools. Each school Great. can get money on. We're gonna have a flea market up, up there on um, Saturday morning. So we're real excited where it's mm -hmm. going this year. We've, uh, it, it's a great location for it. Um, you know, on Sunday, we're gonna have a cornhole tournament. So we're gonna see on Father's Day if we're gonna have a father-son um, cornhole tournament. So it should, be, it should be a lot of fun. So every day has a different emphasis. It sounds so wonderful, you know, special new features and new attractions for the fair this year. People can be really excited and look forward to it. Oh, absolutely. Tell us a little bit more about the dates and times so people can get them on yep. their calendars. So it starts June 16th and will end on Father's Day, the 19th, I believe it is. So, okay. you know, and we are gonna, we're gonna open one less day this year. We normally open on Wednesdays. We're gonna open up on Thursday and really have a, a powerful four day fair up there. Excellent, very, very good. So tell us more about how if I'm interested or someone watching is interested in joining the Lions, how can we go about that? Sure, uh, we have a website, actually we have a couple of them, but uh, I think the, the best one to, to, uh, to visit would be um, actinlions.org. Uh, we also are on, we have a Facebook page uh, that's very active that you can uh, just message us, like us. During, the, during our meetings, do we have a guest speaker has you were there one day to be our guest speaker and we have, we, it's a lot of really great guest speakers that we have up there, really mm -hmm. interesting. So that not only is the meeting about how we're doing as a club and as an organization, but then you have a guest speaker that will come and speak for us, something like that. So it, it really is a fun night. That's great, that's great. I certainly enjoyed my time with you. And um, this has been very, very enlightening. I had no idea of uh, the length of time that the organization's been functioning and what wonderful, wonderful work you're doing. Congratulations to you both and to the Acton Lions Club. We're oh. really thrilled to have Thanks you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you so much for watching Business Matters. We're looking forward to our next show in July. So please join us when we feature three new chamber members and uh, we welcome you back then. The Middlesex West Chamber of Commerce would like to acknowledge and thank our broadcast sponsors, Emerson Hospital and the Westford Regency Inn and Conference Center.